Hi everyone, Fox is here and I'm bringing you my weekly wrap up. So this is the wrap up for the week between June 13th and 19th and I admit I didn't read too much because it was a very busy week for me, but I still have some books to share with you. Although most of them are graphic novels, let's be honest. The first book that I have here is Athos in America by Jason. Yeah, just Jason, there is no last name. I admit when I saw this book in the library, I picked it up just because of the title. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of The Three Musketeers by Alexandra Duma and I've been a fan since I was five or six years old. So whenever I see something, at least like tiny bit related to The Musketeers, I just jump on it. So obviously a book, a graphic novel, which has uh, some sort of a musketeer on the cover and it's called Athos in America, I just had to grab it. I knew absolutely nothing about this book. I just knew that it's a graphic novel and that was it. I didn't know whether it was related to the Musketeers or not. And to answer your question, not exactly. This is a collection of short stories, all graphic in the graphic form. There is not that much text in it. And this is the sort of um, graphics that you can see there. Um, they, this is a collection of short stories. They do have mature content, so they deal with sex, um, substance abuse, um, death, and um, suicidal thoughts, and also murder. And um, all of the characters are anthropomorphic, which means that they, they are animals who look and behave like humans. Um, I... I honestly don't really know what to say more about it. I um, This is all of the short stories which were there in this collection. The Smiling Horse, A Cat from Heaven, The Brain That Wouldn't, Virginia Woolf, Tom Waits on the Moon, So Long, Mary Ann, and Athos in America. To be completely honest, there were some of those short stories which I did not like at all. And um, only the last one, Athos in America, just because it did have some um, references. I no spoilers, as you you know me. <laughs> I, I I won't give any spoilers, but it does have references to the actual the Three Musketeers novel, and um, it's also related to um, another graphic novel uh, by the same author, which is called The Last Musketeer, and this is like a prequel. And that's the only thing that got me really interested in this graphic um graphic short stories collection um i gave the book as a whole three stories because some of the topics like some of the stories didn't really make much sense some of the topics were not my thing whatsoever and um just because I, i'm not interested in murder i'm not interested in uh, psychopaths and all of that and i don't take pleasure in uh, reading anything like that but um, I must say that the twist at the end of one of the stories, as well as the very last story, Athos in America kind of made it up for me and I didn't end up giving this book two stars. I actually gave it three stars, which is, um, it might be a bit higher rating than I expected it to give, but um, still, it was kind of curious read. Uh, not exactly my type of thing in terms of the art or the genres, uh, but still it was pleasant. It was pleasant enough uh, to get me interested in reading something or something more about this author. So if you're interested in something like this, um, I wish there was uh, some... Uh, there was basically... There is no synopsis to this book except for six new stories of love, crime, alcohol, and severe heads. That's everything I can say about this book because it's very true to the point. Yeah, three stars. If you're interested, check it out. Then I read volume number two of Tokyo Babylon Manga by Clamp. Yes, I finally read it. I was trying to delay the moment when I finished it just because I knew that it, the, the ending is going to be very sad because I knew how it's it was going to end. I, I knew the plot before I, I went into this book, but I 
still there were some revelations that I didn't know of, even though I knew what happened, who died, uh, who killed whom, when and how, but I didn't know exactly why or what was the premise of that. But it was a very pleasurable read. I'm I'm so happy that I finally read it. And I cannot really say anything about the plot. I think I said way too much. Uh, but otherwise, I think that the art in volume number two, and you have to understand that this is an omnibus edition. So it's not actually volume number two. It has um, four or five volumes in one. And um, I think the art really improved compared to volume number one and it's more on par with what we can see in X which is sort of a sequel to the story. Um, I gave the whole um, volume two 4.5 stars and the only reason why I didn't give it five stars was just because the main protagonist Subaru he is a very innocent and sweet boy pretty much almost throughout this manga and his character is so different from Subaru the way he is eight years later in X that I don't want to say he annoyed me because that's not true but he was too sweet he he was just too innocent and I know that was the whole point but at the same time I just felt that for me connecting to him as a character was a bit difficult just because of that. I did like uh, any, like all other characters but in terms of Subaru I do like him more in X. <sighs> That's why 4.5 stars otherwise it's perfect. Honestly it's better than volume number one. Seriously, it is. And I'm so happy that I've read it. I'm just, I just, I just want to squee. I want to have like a oh, fangirl moment. Yes, loved it. And then one might think that it would have been logical to pick up volumes five and six of X, which I put kind of on hold because I was reading Tokyo Babylon. But no, I picked up another manga, another old favorite of mine and the one that I've never read before. And that is Sailor Moon. I know, I know, this is ancient. This is actually, no, I was going to say that this is the first anime that I ever watched, but it's not true. Actually, before that was um, Kiki the Witch, I think, uh, not, not Kiki, hmm, maybe it was Kiki, I'm not sure, but there was another anime that I watched before Sailor Moon, but Sailor Moon was definitely the anime that got me into the genre back in the day. And I never had an access and never had an opportunity to read an actual manga. I'm not sure when it was released for the first time in English, but I only saw some scans uh, online from original Japanese manga. And I was always curious to read it, but just never had an opportunity. And as you know, about a month ago, I discovered that Sailor Moon was rebooted, the TV show. And now Sailor Moon Crystal is airing, I believe, every... every I think every two weeks in Japan and um, it's been translated so it's available on Crunchyroll and I'm watching it as well and that that anime is very true to manga so I decided to pick manga up I, I checked my library and discovered that they had it had all 12 volumes so I immediately put all of them um, have requested all of them and um, essentially I got volumes number one and volume number two. I'm still waiting for volume number three and I have other volumes on the way as well but uh, last week I only read volumes number one and two. If you don't know the plot of this manga it's about a girl named Asagi. She's a main character, she's 14 years old and she's a bit a uh, weenie and lazy kid. She goes to school and one day she finds a stray cat who has a very weird crescent shaped bald patch on her forehead. Turns out that the cat is not there by any mistake or chance. She's actually following Asagi to awaken her as a sailor moon, a warrior and um, Stuff happens. I don't know how to describe it because probably everyone knows the plot of this manga or anime and uh, Sailor Moon is a classic. I mean, if you haven't haven't read or watched it and you are into anime, especially 
shoujo anime, which is girls um, anime or manga, you definitely should be checking this one out. I, um, to be completely honest, I don't really like the very beginning of the series, just because it's focusing on Usagi and when uh, she meets other senshi, um, I mean warriors from the inner circle, which is Sailor, um, Mercury, Sailor, Mars, Sailor, Jupiter and Sailor Venus and I like them but they're not my favorites and my favorites has have always been Sailor Neptune, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Pluto. That's why I'm still I'm waiting to get to that moment when they meet because this is what I want to read about. That's why I gave the volume number one 3.5, 3.75 around four stars and the same rating to volume number two. Uh, their main focus is on Usagi and her friends and how they discover th things and they're still looking for that silver crystal, that, which is fine, but it's not as exciting to, to read as some other storylines. I was really surprised that the current anime of Sailor Moon Crystal is actually following manga so, so closely. It is so close, in fact, that since I watched those episodes quite recently, it's almost boring to read manga because it just follows panel after panel. Everything is the same. There are small changes, obviously, as the person who watched the original anime series more than once, and I was a huge fan of those series, even though the graphics were not so good back in the 90s, I know that. But at the same time, I was a huge fan of it. And now, as I read manga, it's a bit difficult to reconcile myself with the fact that some things that happened in anime, in that original anime that I thought were canon, are actually not. And there were some things that I really enjoyed in that original anime, and they were never part of manga. I know that in a way it's okay, because it's like a parallel universe or some other version of the events, but at the same time I kind of feel cheated, because now I'm reading manga and I'm expecting things to go in a certain way, but they do not. They do follow, it coincide almost 100% to what we can see in Sailor Moon Crystal, but because of that I, I, I kind of get confused, it's as if I'm reading a very well drawn or very well written fanfic because I keep thinking that no it's wrong it, it didn't happen like this but actually it did in manga and if you want to have a look at how it looks inside it's really really old school it's uh it's actually quite cool you know I I'm enjoying it and I don't have any trouble following everything I I think I can tell why this series became so popular right away because they're really, really good and they were drawn pretty well. Uh, the only thing which is very different since I don't have that much experience reading manga, um, I was surprised that when I, I recently read a lot of manga by Clamp and they do have a completely different way of structuring the page and panels, especially, especially Axe manga, they had very structured pages, very structured pages. It means that you can see which panel follows which and the, but here, uh, and that's actually what I like, as you can see, pictures are just going beyond the panels, they kind of cross over. And um, even though there are some pages which are really structured, at the same time, there are a lot of pages and a lot of images that just go over and overlap, which is fine, and I think it's pretty cool, as a matter of fact. But for me, Sailor Moon is a bit too girly, and I don't know whether I would have um, picked up the manga without actually watching anime, because anime, I feel as if it's a bit more paced, and um, definitely there is a huge difference when you watch anime and you're so used to colors, and here everything is black and white. Nevertheless, I'm enjoying it, and I cannot wait to read other volumes. Yeah, this is it, guys. This is basically everything that I read in full last week. I did listen to audiobook for a bit, and that was the same one, The Night Manager by John Le Carré. I'm still very slowly going through that one just because I didn't have much time to listen to an audiobook. There is one more book that I've been reading throughout last week and I'm still reading, and this is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I'm almost done with this book. I have about 60 pages left, 
and I sort of hoped that I would finish it by the end of the week but I didn't and one of the reasons for that is not just because I was really busy and I didn't want to rush through the book but it was also because I was trying to savor it. I, as, as I mentioned before, I've been meaning to read this series for quite, quite a long time and finally I have a chance to read them and even though I'm participating in Hobalon Read Along, which is organized by Samantha from Sam's Nonsense channel, I ordered, um, unfortunately I don't have all books on hands. This is the only book that I have so far. I ordered books number two and three from Book Depository a week ago and they only got dispatched yesterday, which means that I will not get them in the next week or so. I'll probably get them in three weeks because Book Depository is taking their sweet time to deliver books to Canada. Who would have thought, right? But um, because of that, I'm really behind on the read along and um, I really want to read next book as soon as possible. Because of that, I'm trying to savor whatever is left of the book number one because I know once I finish it, I will be craving book number two, which I do not have, unfortunately. Nevertheless, I'm not going to say more about this book except for I'm really enjoying it and I'll probably finish it this week unless I manage to engage myself with some other book and just leave it be for a week or so, which I honestly do not want to do, but I cannot think of anything else because I don't know what to do. I, I want to finish it, but at the same time, if I finish it, what am I going to read next if I don't have books number two and three? As to my plans, what I'm going to read this week, it will definitely be Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, but I also want to read more manga as I got a lot of books from the library and I hope to get to them very soon. And I don't have any sad plans as I also got quite a few books in June. I sort of went on a very huge book buying spree. Yeah. So I have a lot of books right now and I have a lot of books that I'm really excited about. I don't want to make any plans, but I hope that I will have more books to talk about next week. As to my plans for this week, I definitely plan to continue reading Assassin's Apprentice. I will must pro like most probably finish it this week. Otherwise, I plan to read more manga. I have more books that are borrowed from the library and there are more books on hold at the library. And I bought a huge amount of books this month. I It's just insane. I bought a lot of books and I'm really excited about all of them. And I hope that I will be able to pick up some of them to read maybe this or next week. This is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Bye!